Hey yo, 90s check. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Kayla, otherwise known as Let's Get Knit Faced here on YouTube and over on Instagram if you want to follow me there. And I want to share with you this 90s inspired crochet bag tutorial. And these are really cute and playful and on trend right now and I'm excited to share them with you. They have a couple customizable details in them like a clasp and a fun plastic chain that I got online that I have linked below and I will explain further in the tutorial. So there's those options to change up the colors and also I explain how you can hold different yarns together to achieve the same weight as a chunky weight yarn in this pattern. So that gives you the opportunity to kind of explore some fun color combinations here like I did with this bag which I adore so that will be there for you and as with all of my tutorials I will have written below the instructions in a pattern form for you to follow along along with the video obviously and please leave any comments or questions below and I will do my best to answer them and that's it if you like the video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content let's get into it alrighty let's start off with some materials you are going to need a size K crochet hook or a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook. And you are going to need some chunky weight yarn. I personally love the fabric yarn as I've used before on this channel by We Are Knitters. This is a cotton recycled t-shirt yarn. It's great for making durable things. Um, it is in the color light yellow. If you do not have a chunky weight yarn, but say you have a bunch of other yarn laying around, you can make a chunky weight yarn by holding three strands of a four ply yarn, um, which tends to run a little bit cheaper, and you can make a fun color combination or just an overall more personalized bag. And I really love these three colors held together. I think it turns into a really cute bag. So that option is there for you. You can go with that or a chunky weight yarn. And for visual purposes, I will be using the yellow chunky yarn in this video because I think it's easier to see. Um, and less distracting. But this is how that other style turned out. I think it's really cute and really playful. Um, and you can see it shows the pattern really well with the variegated yarns. And I even added in a chain of those yarns in this chain that I got on Amazon, which I will link below and I will talk about later in the video. So this is how the bag turns out. It kind of has this open billfold style with a flap that comes down. And I also picked up these clasps that I also bought on Amazon and I will link below. And they work by pushing it down and then the button kind of pops out so it is secured. And then you push it back in and you can release it. So that I did not secure onto this bag yet um, just because I wanted to be able to show you what it looks like without it. But that top piece would fit onto the flap and the bottom piece would be secured onto the body of the bag. And I will show you how to attach that later into the video. Okay, so let's talk stitches for this bag. It uses the basket weave stitch, which I really like for its texture and visual interest that it gives the bag. And I think it really helps those stitches stand out, which goes well with the chunky weight yarn. And the bag is made by this longer piece folding over and a front panel rectangle piece and then a trim piece to add some width to the bag um, so you can fit more things in it. And this process is the exact same one that I used to make this bag. Again, just the yarn held together is a bit different, but if you like the way that this turned out, that is what you should get with this tutorial. And for this bag, the yellow, I thought the gold clasp would go well with it. The package that I bought on Amazon came with two silver clasps and two gold ones, so I got to choose. So I think I'll do silver on the other bag, gold on this one, and this is the chain that I got to go with the yellow yarn. It is a lovely tortoiseshell pattern, and I think it'll be really pretty with that. And I, I had the pink one go with the more colorful bag. And the, the seller of these had other options like black and like clear, so you could play around with that. But I really liked the tortoiseshell. And it comes with rings, so it has two gold attachment rings that open and close, or it has two silver ones. So you can choose kind of what your vibe is. If you're more of a gold person or a silver person, I definitely am a gold person. So I went with the gold clasp and the gold rings for this. 
So that's kind of the vibe of this situation. And yeah, whatever you have, whatever you are interested in, I think it's out there. So you can really make this bag whatever you want it to be. Again, those clasps and those chains, um, and I can even link the, the We Are Knitters yarn below so you know what's the tea, all right? So without further ado, let's get into the process of making this bad boy, huh? So this bag will suck up a lot of yarn because this is kind of a denser pattern and um, it forms a thicker paneled bag, which I think is something you want in a purse, um, but yeah. It definitely uh, sucks up a lot of yarn, so I recommend pulling a lot out at a time because it's annoying to have to go back and, you know, unwind some. So let's start with a good old-fashioned slip knot, and what we're going to do to start, we're going to chain 24 stitches and two turning chain stitches. So that will give us a total of 26 chains to start off this bag. And throughout this process, I'm going to stress that you keep your tension pretty light here so that the stitches um, you're making are easier to work into because sometimes this pattern can get a little bit tight and hard to work. So keeping that tension loose will help with that. Once we have our 26 stitches, we are going to yarn over and then we're going to be careful to skip those two turning stitches, which is making up for that first double crochet. And we're going to begin by working into the, the top loop of the third um, chain there. So we're working into the top half of it, and then we're beginning our double crochet stitch, which involves yarning over, pulling through the first two loops, yarning over, and then pulling through the second two loops. So there I go, yarning over, working into the top of that chain, pulling through, yarning over, pulling through the first two loops, yarning over and pulling through the second two loops and that's the double crochet stitch which will be around um, in this tutorial so definitely get used to that and you can watch me do a couple more of those if you are unfamiliar with the stitch and again keep your tension loose here so that as you're working across you just have um, an easier time working so I'm going to work this double crochet stitch once into each of the top loops of all the chains all the way down the row and i'll come back when i'm done and with that first row complete we can go ahead and get started with our basket weave pattern and this is going to involve working in sets of three and if you get caught up on any part of this please just rewatch the video and i think it will become more clear as i make my way down the row so don't get frustrated if you don't understand it within the first couple stitches and it's going to be very important to keep your tension loose here because I do not have any turning stitches into built into this pattern because I think if you just keep your tension loose enough it will work without it and this pattern is done by working into the posts of the previous rose stitch which is what I'm trying to show you here with this darning needle so we're going to be working sometimes through front to back of the post or back to front of the post. So to begin, yarn over, and then we're going to, on this first stitch, work into the back of the post of that previous double crochet. So I'm going through, yarning over, and very loosely with a lot of slack, pulling through, and then I'm going to yarn over, and I'm going to double crochet as usual. So that means I'm going to I guess struggle to pull that loop through the first two two loops on the the needle and then I'm going to yarn over and pull through the second two loops again making sure that I have enough slack to kind of pull through a bit more yarn than you normally would so now I'm going to yarn over I'm going to work behind that second post and I'm going to grab my yarn and I'm going to pull that up flat and parallel with the row then I'm going to yarn over and pull through two loops and yarn over and double crochet as usual. Now third and final one of these for this moment, we're going to yarn over, find that third post, work behind it. Grab that working yarn, pull through with some slack, and then I'm going to yarn over, pull through the first two loops, yarn over, pull through the second two loops. And then you can kind of pull that out and that was our working in three. So now we're going to begin with our second um, three stitches. So now, instead of the front, I'm going to 
pull from the back, push through and go around that post from the back. Grab my yarn and then I'm going to pull through back to where I began. And then I'm going to yarn over and then double crochet as usual. So bear with me as I do this a couple times and it will become more clear. So I'm yarning over, working from behind the piece into that space between the post and then I'm going right over that and out the back. I'm grabbing my working yarn, coming back through exactly where I was and out the back. And then I'm going to pull, give myself some slack of yarn. Then I'm going to double crochet as usual. And it helps to kind of pinch your yarn here um, so that, or sorry, you pinch your, what you're working on so that when you pull through, you don't get caught on any other strands and it just kind of comes out clean. So right there, I didn't do it, so it didn't look as good. But um, this will this gets hard if there's not a lot of slack in your yarn. So I'm going to keep stressing that that's important. Okay, so that was my third stitch there. And that means I'm going to start working in the front now again for three stitches. So I just, I've just yarned over and I'm going to go through the front and work into that post that way and double crochet as usual. There is a pattern beginning to form here and that is what is going to give us that basket weaved look texture. I'm yarning over and I'm pulling through my working yarn from the front of the piece. That was number two. So now I'm going to do number three. Just be patient with this first row. It will get easier as you learn um, and work through it more and more so we can be we can begin to see the texture showing. Now we're going to work in the back of the piece for three stitches. Yarning over, grabbing that post. See how I'm pinching the yarn together, pinching the that row together so that it can come out a lot cleaner and double crochet as usual. This stitch is fairly rough on your hands. I do knit and crochet a lot, so I guess my hands are a bit sore a lot anyway, but I do find that working with this thicker yarn and this is a more laborious stitch um, as far as crocheting goes, it does take a toll on your hands. So just do it when you feel like it. Um, don't get too stressed out about it or frustrated. And again, having a loose tension will go a long way with this stitch. And as you go, you can kind of pull on it, stretch it out, make sure it's laying nice and flat. And then keep track of where you are in your stitch pattern. Now I'm back working in the front of the posts and double crocheting out. And I'm towards the end of the row now, but still working in pairs of threes. If you want a longer bag, feel free to cast on more, right? I had you cast on 24 stitches and two turning stitches. 24 is divisible by three, but any number divisible by three will work with this pattern if you want a smaller bag or a longer bag. And then of course you can adjust how long you crochet for on top of that to get your height. Um, but this is very customizable and totally up to you. This is just the size that um, is most typical for a shoulder bag and came out cute. So now I'm back working in the back of the posts and you can see how that ball I was working with has already dwindled down quite a bit um, after not working too much of the yarn. So I will leave the exact yardage in the description because um, I do not have that number right now, but I will find it and leave it there below. And I'm out of frame, so that was a good job by me. Do you guys like my nails? I um, did them special for this video. So now we have three posts left because we're working in numbers divisible by three, which go best with our pattern. So I'm going to yarn over and work those last three stitches from behind the piece. And see, I have one full double crochet left, and then I have our two turning stitches there as our mock double crochet post. So those count, those are what I'm going, oh gosh, right when I'm getting to the end, I needed more yarn. Get it together, you know? Well, I guess you can see how I attach these pieces, which is kind of exciting, you know, just like a little double knot, super fancy. And then we'll be back to BAU. So, 
Um, so I'm yarning over and I'm working into that space in between the last stitch and the end of the piece and just working around that last post with my double crochet and that is the end of the first row. So not as bad as it looks. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the opposite of what we see in the row before for the row we're working right now. So we see these are elevated so that means we are going to work in the back of the piece to create more of that valley in the pattern. So if I could just get back in frame here, I can show you what I'm doing. We're going to yarn over and we're going to find our first post and we're going to pull through our yarn. Again, very loosely because we have no chaining, we have no turning stitches here. So we're going to double crochet loosely on this first stitch. Now we're going to proceed as normal and we are going to grab our yarn and work in the back and grab onto that post. Pull our yarn around the post and oh my gosh, what a mess. Okay, I saved it. And we're going to double crochet as huge. That was number two. I know it feels like a long time, but that was only number two. But that is the gist of the basket weave stitch. If you need to go back and review that row, please do to get a better understanding. I, it took me a couple tries to understand exactly how I wanted this stitch to come out. So go ahead and look back at that. But what we're going to be doing is that exact row for seven rows on this first panel. And that will be the shorter one that will go in the front of the bag. And then you're going to cut your yarn and begin a second version of this. Exactly the same, exactly the same number of stitches cast it on. And the same way we are going to work across, except it's going to be a longer piece. So this piece will be 15 rows. And all of this information will be listed in the description um, for you to go back and check on. But that is what is going to make up the body of your purse. So again, it's customizable. If you want it to be thinner, longer, wider, please go ahead and do so just by adding rows or adding on stitches that you cast on. I feel like this is a good jumping off point to really make whatever kind of purse that you want. And now let's get started on the trim panel that will go around in between these two pieces. So let's go ahead and get started with a handy dandy slip knot and then we are going to begin chaining 48 stitches plus two turning stitches which will go around the perimeter of the lower half of our little bag if you will. Okay so here I go chaining and again tension is important here. We are going to want to work not too tight and um, not too loose. So I'm going to put together those 50 chains and it's always a good idea to double check that you have the correct amount. Okay so now we are going to skip two stitches which would count as our first double crochet and then we are going to begin by double crocheting into that top loop of the chain. So there I am working into that and double crocheting as usual and that is going to be how the whole row is going to work. So you're just going to yarn over and double crochet into the top loop of each chain and I am going to fast forward through this because otherwise this tutorial will be an hour long. So now let's begin the process of connecting these three pieces together and to do so I am just going to single crochet across and if you prefer to sew these together with a darning needle and a piece of the same thread that is definitely an option. I'm just going to single crochet because it might add a little bit more security um, and a little bit more of a clean line, but totally up to you. So this might look a little haphazard and that is because it is. So I am working through one of the kind of random stitches on that messier edge of the rectangle and then the piece that I just completed has a cleaner edge so it's easy to pick up a loop as you go along. Um, but then I'm just kind of finding a matching loop on the other side as I can't match them up perfectly because it's not really the same pattern. So I'm very messily going into one and going into the other, pulling a piece of 
pulling a loop through and then I'm single crocheting and I'm just going to do this down the row and it can look a lot better um, along the bottom when there's a perfect loop to match up to a perfect loop but it doesn't end up being that noticeable and you can just kind of use your best judgment as to which loop you should be picking up and space that out along as you go so that you don't end up with not enough um, of the trim on the other side. This number of stitches should work out perfectly from my math. If you start and you work evenly along the row, um, along the three sides actually of the rectangle, and it will get you perfectly to the other side. So just make sure you're working evenly and again just pick up stitches as you go and single crochet across these two pieces together. And now we're going to add the third piece to our little purse sandwich here. <laughs> and we're going to attach it in the same way. And I do think it is a little bit um, cumbersome to attach these pieces because they are thicker and um, it will require a little bit of effort to push that hook through and single crochet across. But um, it is going to be worth it to get that clean line. And this video is a little bit awkward to film because I was trying to stay in frame of the shot um, so please forgive me for that but it's going to be the same idea um, working along these shorter sides we're working into that messier edge and just kind of finding a loop that works for us and then we're just the main part here is to make sure that you're working evenly so that the same amount of um, basket weave stitches on the back side as it is on the front side and that is going to be key so that your purse can lay flat um, I think I did a better job at this on my more colorful bag because um, it came out a little bit more square. I'm not really sure why. Maybe because I was holding it a little bit weirder to film it here. Um, but honestly, this is going to be the most important part because this is going to form how your bag ultimately will look and how it will um, take shape. So definitely take a minute to plan and figure out what piece needs to go with what piece and then this will um, bring your bag fully to life okay so i'm just going to again fast forward because i can't have a hour long video and you'll get the gist um definitely leave a comment um if you have a question off camera i cut and wove in my ends with my darning needle and here comes my favorite part is these freaking chains they are so cute and i'm so glad i found them again link in description to check them out and we are going to attach them right on the edge of this little one inch piece here so that they can very nicely float up to grab onto our shoulder and that is going to be the plan here i'm going with the gold loops i went with the silver loops on the other bag and i added in a chain there so i will show you how to do that though in the end I do opt just to have the plain chain here um, without some yarn woven in through it. So what I'm doing, I'm going to work this yarn around this loop here to attach it. And bear with me because I don't do this as well as I will do it in a minute. So if this isn't super clear, just wait because I will explain it better. So I'm yarning over inside the loop to pull that through and then I'm slipping into that first stitch and I will secure this better in a minute. So then I'm yarning over, again that yarn is flowing through the loop to attach it, and I slipped. So now I'm going to do that again for added security, and slip that through. You can also single crochet, I don't know why I didn't do that here, but that would be a, a more secure stitch. And then I'm going to do it again. So this is allowing me to work up the side of that circle, so that I can begin the process of chaining. And this is something a little bit more of an embellishment that you can do to add on to the look of your bag if you so choose. So I'm just doing that so that I have that semicircle complete. And I'm going to show you on my other bag that I chained and then I wove that chain through the actual plastic chain of the handle for some added pizzazz. And I think it looks really cute with the pink. Um, so that is there for you. I love that bag so much. But I did wanted to show off the tortoise shell pattern here that I have on this chain so I I wasn't in the end going to have that chain in there but I'm going to show you here for the purposes of 
the tutorial, you know, that's why you're here, a tutorial. So from there, I'm just going to, this is like a little launching off point for my chain and I'm going to chain as much as I need to extend the length of the plastic chain. So that will take whatever amount of yarn that it does. I'm only going to chain here for a little bit just to show you for the purposes of the video. So once that's done, you're going to cut your end hypothetically, but I just have this length of chain. So what you're going to do is you're going to take that and you're going to weave it through the chain itself and you're going to do this loose enough so that the chain can still have some mobility because you don't want it to be too tight that it's locking up those links from moving within one another. Um, so just do it loose enough so that it is still in there pretty securely but um, you can move them and I think it'll add a cute little added layer um, to your bag. So here's how I'm going to attach it in a little bit better of a situation and if you don't want to add a chain this is what you can do. So I'm working off frame, of course, um, a slip stitch to join the yarn to the trim area of that bag. And I'm taking my ring that I'm going to attach it with and looping through, yarning over through the middle of that ring so that the yarn runs through it. And I'm going to slip that stitch back through. And now what I'm going to do is just hold that yarn so that I can reach around and grab it to pull through and then I'm going to single crochet. And I'm going to do that three more times, or three times in total. So I'll grab it, pull through, and single crochet like so to secure that ring. And then I'm gonna pull through my yarn. And then I'm going to take that end and tie it to the end um, that I started with to join the piece. And that will offer some really good security to hold that chain in place. And if you do not want to purchase one of these plastic chains online, that is fine. Um, you can still definitely work around that by just chaining um, yarn. I know I keep saying, saying chain a bunch, but you can chain yarn across the top and you can adjust how long you want that to be. Um, my only caution with this would be that some yarn stretches and this is one of those yarns that would stretch. Um, so you might have to adjust your tension or adjust the length because that will stretch out if you do use this bag often and then gravity is pulling on it and all that jazz. So that's something you can figure out if you choose to go with that. And I think a lot of different variations on this bag would look cute. You can definitely omit the chain, you can omit the clasp, you can add in a yarn chain through the chain, all these other types of things um, just to get to what you want it to be. So the world is your oyster, okay? Never forget that. So now let's attach the clasp to the bag. That'll be our final piece. And I'm going to use a couple strands of some strong thread that I have. And I'm going to hold those together and I'm going to weave it through these teeny tiny holes that are in the back of the top piece of the clasp. And this is the piece that will hang down and fit into the latch part of the device. And then the bottom piece has these prongs on the back of them. It has two sets of prongs that I will feed through the, the um, stitches of the bag. And then I'm going to fold those over. And then I'm probably going to somehow secure these more, maybe with some glue. Um, once I decide that I for sure want this clasp. And I'm going to um, set those up so they are even. They're even distance away from the sides so that they're directly in the center and then the clasp should be secured. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and you found my instructions to be well explained and hopefully you have a bag of your own if you made it this far. So that is it. Again, please leave any questions you have below. Comment anything you'd like to see me make. Subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.